Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray that you bless us today and bless the session, bless the teaching. Uh, let your word, Lord, come into our hearts and don't let this thing just be a teaching and a lesson to us, but we pray that it will become a conviction that will bring transformation and spiritual growth. Father, we love you. We commit our time to you. Bless our hearts tonight, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tonight, I will continue in the our series on the Christian doctrine. So we come to the classification of doctrine. Yeah? Again, this teaching, I am uh, very uh, excited to teach because I felt that all of us as Christians, as believers, as members, uh, we should not be deprived in knowing uh, some of these important things, especially the fundamental things in our Christian belief, right? So, so that we will know where we stand. Because these teachings is only, uh, you can find it in the Bible school or the seminary. So as a pastor, I feel you need to know this. Um, some of the theological uh, terms, right? Maybe is, some are very strange or unknown to us. But it will help us you know, to understand and uh, where we stand uh, on our Christian faith, right? So talking about the doctrine, the Christian doctrine, important, very, very important to know what we believe and why we believe what we believe. So doctrine is very important. Many people, they sort of like very afraid to uh, you know, hear the word doctrine because they said doctrine is not good. We covered this last week. Some objections, some people say that doctrine is uh, outdated, obsolete, uh, no use today. Some say doctrine brings division in the church and all that, but we have explained that. You know, we cannot neglect doctrine. We cannot just put it aside because some people, they object and they criticize, but Actually, doctrine is very, very important. And there is a proper uh, arrangement and a proper interpretation and understanding on the Christian doctrine, especially the fundamental teachings or the foundational uh, truths and teaching on the Christian faith. Because uh, also we mentioned last week, what you believe will affect your character, your behavior, all right, and your eternal destiny so what we believe the doctrine that we believe is very important okay so tonight we come to this place a classification of doctrine so i want to uh, share this to us tonight all right praise god uh, okay. cannot, cannot press. the classification of doctrine yeah in in the bible actually uh we list you know, just just press the one down. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Now it's moving. Okay. All right. Uh, the Bible lists several classes of doctrine. Uh, of course, many teaching in the Bible, but we have these fundamental truths or foundational truths. So these are the least that the Bible give us. Okay. Uh, number two, doctrine proceeds from three sources, actually. That is God, man, or Satan. So these are the three sources from which doctrines uh, come forth or spring forth. It comes whether from God or from man, because men also create doctrines, or from Satan. Uh, Satan also um, bring doctrine. We will uh, cover that tonight. And uh, these are the three sources of thoughts, which is illustrated in Matthew 16, verse 11, uh, uh, verse 13 to 23. We will go there. If you have your Bible, you can turn to Matthew 16, verse 13 to 23. I, I will read that to us tonight. Right? I hope we can cover everything that I want to cover tonight. Um, in verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, 
the son of man am? They said, some say, thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, uh, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, verse 15, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon uh, Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. 20. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So uh, this portion of scripture illustrate these three sources of thoughts. We will see this. Uh, number one, the thoughts of God. Uh, we can see the thoughts of God here in verse 16 and 17. When Peter confessed that Jesus was the Christ. Uh, actually it was God's revelation concerning his beloved son. Because Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? And then they say, some say, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah the prophet. But then Jesus asked them the second question, but who do you say that I, the son of man, am? Then Peter answered, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus told him, he said, You are Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven has revealed these things unto you. So that is the thoughts of God. God can bring his revelation to us and reveal his will and his thought to us like what he did to Peter. That's the thoughts of God. The thoughts of man, we can see that in verse 13 and 14 when jesus asked them who do people say that i the son of man am and then the disciples say some says uh, elijah some says jeremiah you know or other prophets are uh, one of the prophets so that is the thoughts of men some says or uh, because jesus asked them what do people say about me and they say some people say you are Jeremiah. Some people say you are Elijah. Some people say so. That is the thoughts of men. And actually the thought of men here, there is nothing sinful. It's only human thinking. That is what human thought. Uh, it's human thinking apart from divine revelation of God. So when men create doctrine, it is men's opinion. It is men's thinking. It is not God's revelation or divine revelation of God. So we need to understand that. So doctrine can come from the thoughts of God or the thoughts of man, even though it sounds spiritual, but it is not a divine revelation. And then number three, the thoughts of Satan. The thoughts of Satan. Uh, the thoughts of Satan is seen in verse 21 <clears throat> to 23. Uh, because Peter earlier confessed because he received this revelation, he confessed that Jesus uh, is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But now here, in verse 21 to 23, uh, he took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus because Jesus said, I will be uh, crucified, I will be arrested and all of that. Um, then he says, uh, Peter rebuked Jesus. He said, Lord, this must not happen to you, right? 
Then Jesus rebuked Peter. He said, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. So Peter said that, but Jesus rebuked Satan when Peter said that. So that tells us that the thought which Peter spoke about Jesus will not go to the cross. Jesus will not die and rise again the third day. That is what Satan Satan's thought being planted in the mind of Peter. So that is why Peter speak. So God can put his thoughts in men. So men will speak the thoughts of God. But Satan also can put his thoughts in men and speak out the thoughts of Satan. That is why today we have all these um, cults and uh, what do you call uh, satanist yeah satanic group and all of that uh, today because satan can put his thoughts in uh, men uh, very interesting right very interesting okay so it is clearly shown that the mind of man our mind the mind of man is open to these three sources of thoughts and communication that is why all must be tested in the light of the written word of God. Uh, that's why as Christians, as believers, one of our responsibility, when you hear teaching, when you hear people prophesy, when you hear people preach, one of your responsibility is you need to go back to the Bible and you need to test all those things and check in the Bible whether what they teach is biblical or sound teaching or sound doctrine right if we are not sure because uh, many Christians they are not well versed of the Bible and they don't uh, they, they don't have good Bible knowledge so if you are that kind of person you need to check with your leaders or you need to check with your pastors especially those who who are well versed with the Bible so at least they can explain to you whether that is uh, a good doctrine a good teaching or not right because we are open our minds are open to these thoughts so sometimes if we are not well versed of the bible we just believe all those teachings you know and we thought that it is god's word or god's teaching because it sounds spiritual well in fact it comes from the thoughts of men and it comes from the thoughts of satan right so when people give you dreams when people share to you when people prophesy about 2022, they prophesy <laughs> all of this. You need to go back to the Bible first. Don't shout hallelujah and praise the Lord. Don't say, wow, that is the word of the Lord. You need to go back to the Bible and ask yourself, is this a word from God? Is this a divine revelation? Or is this just the thought of man or the thought of Satan? Hallelujah. Praise God. Last year, one prophet, a very well-known prophet, I don't have to tell you his name. I saw his video because they circulate around his video. He prophesied. He says after COVID-19, another virus, very deadly virus will come into the world. Because he said God showed him. He went up to heaven in the presence of God. And he had a conference with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He had a conference with them. And then he says, God told him that after COVID-19, there is a deadly virus coming to the earth because of man's rebellion against God. God is punishing man. He said that virus is deadly and it will sting people like the scorpion tail will stung people. Very painful, you know, and people will die because of that. Well, I was waiting last year and I did not see that. <laughs> Of course, people die of COVID-19. We saw that a lot, but we don't see people died as what he described, you know. So, of course, when I listen to the prophecy, uh, I know that it is not of God uh, because it's not in line with the Bible. Our God is not a God of doom, the Bible says. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible says he does not necessarily or inflict or you know afflict the children of men uh, uh, for without reason right god does not simply just afflict the children of men or the sons of men uh, god is a loving god even though the world is rebelling against god but god loves 
loves us. God loves the sinners. God loves the world. The judgment of God has not yet come. We have not even reached half of the book of Revelation. In the seven trumpets, the seven vials, the seven bowls, we have not even come to the half of it, uh, of the judgment of God. God's judgment will come in the end. Not yet. COVID-19 pandemic is not God's judgment. It is not God's judgment because the judgment will come later. God wants men to believe in Jesus and you and I have to preach the gospel so that people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, about the doctrine of God, the doctrine of God. Uh, in Deuteronomy 32 verse 2, uh, you don't have to open your Bible, it's on your screen. It says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. Proverbs 4 verse 2, he says, I give you good doctrine. Isaiah 29 verse 4, they also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. But the Bible mentioned about God's doctrine a lot. 1 Timothy 6 1, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. We are encouraged to live holy and godly and blamelessly. 1 Timothy 6, 3, the doctrine which according to godliness, talk, uh, Paul talked about doctrine that is according to godliness. I will touch on that also later on. The doctrine is according to godliness. So God's doctrine will produce godliness. Titus 2 verse 10, that they may adorn, or the Christian, you and I will adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Uh, the Bible also talks about the doctrine of Christ. This is the doctrine of God, under the doctrine of God. Hebrews 6 1, he said, the first principles of the doctrine of Christ. Matthew 7 28. They were astonished at his doctrine. So when Jesus was preaching about the, the, the kingdom of God, those people who were listening to him, they were astonished at his doctrine because his teaching, his doctrine was different from the teaching of the Pharisees, from the teachings of the, uh, you know, the elders uh, in Jerusalem. Because we know the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, they teach for doctrine, the commandments of man. They emphasize the commandments of man, not the commandment of God. But they said, this is what God say. Right? Right. So, Celine, somebody is coming in. Jesus taught many things in parable and doctrine. So, Jesus teach many things, you know, in parables and also uh, doctrine. Believers... The Bible says we, we are to reject any who does not bring the doctrine of Christ. 2 John verse 9 and 10. So, you know, but a lot of Christians today, because of lack of understanding, and, you know, not well versed of the Bible, so whatever teaching comes, they just embrace and they just welcome and shouting hallelujah along the way. <laughs> but the Bible says we need to reject any who does not bring the doctrine of Christ. Jesus said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether it be of man. John 7, verse 16 to 17. And also, uh, in the doctrine of God, it is also uh, taught by the apostles. Uh, the apostles, they are men and woman that is inspired by God and we have their writings especially in the New Testament all right the early church continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine so when the church was birthed and the new convert came they believed Jesus and all the first thing they did they were you know faithful and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine Acts chapter 2 verse 42 Acts 5, 28, 13, verse 12, 17, verse 19. So that is what the church did in the beginning. And we encourage people today, you need to be steadfast, continue steadfastly in 
the teachings in the church, especially when our church has Bible study and teaching like this or Sunday service with a sermon, we need to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Many Christian or church members, they said, I don't need to join that. I'm so busy. I can read the Bible myself. Well, what I know is many, they don't even read their Bible because they are so busy, they don't read. So actually, yes, we, you need to read your Bible, but you need an explanation that you will be guided properly in knowing your Bible. right? Because many people who read the Bible, yes, we can read our Bible personally, but without guidance, many also interpret the Bible wrongly because nobody guide and teach them. So actually we are blessed that we have this kind of uh, teaching, uh, preaching in the church, all right? That we will be guided in the proper way so that we will understand the Bible, right? Um, we do encourage members uh, to join us, all right? But sometimes, uh, I don't know, uh, in the modern day, some members, they take it lightly and take it uh, not seriously. Well, in fact, last time, yeah, before pandemic, we have Bible study in the church. We announce, we keep on telling, come for Bible study, prayer meeting, all that. Very hard for them to come. Some says, I don't have money for Uber, for Grab. I don't have transport. We fetch them. And then later on, when we fetch them, they said, I'm not coming. Some, we arrive in the house, they said, I'm not coming. You know, some, they said, I'm not free. You know? So a lot of excuses. But today, we don't need to come to church. We have our phone, our computer, right in the living room, right our room. Even today, Olive was in the car. She still can log in, all right? People are traveling. They still can log in and join the, the meeting, the fellowship online. But some people, they still do not want to log in for meetings. I, I think what we do is we are depriving ourselves from being guided and know the truth. Because the key there is continue steadfastly. So there must be a regular and continue, uh, continual fellowship and also listening to the word of God. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I went through this teaching uh, a few times already, so that's why I can teach this. And, you know, when I read or go, go through the seminars of this teaching, one time there's, there are many things I don't understand. But when I read it again, and I have to teach it again, then I begin to understand more. So this is what happened when we are, you know, we continue steadfastly, we are regular, even though we have heard the message, but we hear it again, that helps us to remember the word of God. Amen. That's why we read the Bible continually and repeatedly. All right. On top of that, I am collecting verses that I read. I put it in my notes so that during the day of free time, I can open my notes and read those verses to remind myself so I can remember these verses again, all right? Then I will have more understanding about the verses. If I'm led to study the verse or the word, so I will go into the dictionary. I will go to Hebrew and Greek. I will go, go through uh, some uh, what I call word studies to understand. That is how we learn. That is how we learn. Praise God. So the doctrine of the apostles, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. All through ministers, ministries, pastors, church leaders, teachers, Bible teachers, will teach the apostles' doctrine. What the apostles have written in the scripture, they will teach nothing more and nothing less. And they will contend for it. We, when we know this truth, we teach it. We contend for our faith. All right? We stand for the truth. That is what Jude verse 3 says. Hey, hallelujah. Wonderful. I'm excited to teach this one. The New Testament epistles were written primarily by the apostles. So most of the New Testament are uh, written by the apostles. And what happened is they laid the foundation of revelation in the New Testament. Other ministries must teach the same. Um, today, you don't have to look for truth or wait for new revelation. It is all written there. So you just need to teach 
what they have written and what the Bible teach. You don't have to wait for new revelation and all of that. And this is what we will cover in the next uh, topic, that is the doctrine of revelation. This is what we covered. Uh, the question is, is there new revelation? All right? This is what we will cover in the next topic. Uh, in Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, uh, give us a brief but comprehensive summary of the apostles' doctrine from justification to perfection. So, uh, if you read Hebrews uh, chapter 6, from verse 1, uh, this is being listed there. Uh, you can read it later when you open your Bible, but uh, this is what listed there, the doctrine of repentance from dead works, uh, the doctrine of faith toward God. Actually, these are fundamentals. These are the basic, and this is what we teach in the believer's cl class or the, the discipleship class. All right? Uh, C, the doctrine of baptism. D, doctrine of laying on of hands. E, doctrine of resurrection from the dead. F, doctrine of eternal judgment, and G, doctrine of perfection. So this is almost uh, most of the fundamental uh, teaching of foundation, uh, Christian foundation is being listed here. But of course, there are some other things that is not included in Hebrews 6, verse 1 to uh, 2, or verse 1 to 4. But in the other parts of the Bible, it is mentioned there, right? Like the, the doctrine of angels the doctrine of god right those are the fundamental uh, doctrine doctrine of salvation uh, is all there it's all there now the doctrine of man the doctrine of man this is the thoughts of man right in matthew 15 verse 9 speaks about those who were teaching for doctrine the commandments of men, all right? The commandments of men. Some, some uh, church or some other groups, they mix the word of God with the doctrine of men. So they take God's word, they take the Bible to support the doctrine of men, like the traditions or the teaching of the ancient people or the older people. So they, they try to, uh, you know, put that together with the word of God. But that is a doctrine of man. Jesus said that the doctrine and traditions of man make the word of God of none effect. So if you put traditions and doctrine of man in the church, it will make the word of God of no effect in the life of a person. Mark 7 verse 7 to 13 says that. Paul also wants us not to be carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, uh, and the cunning craftiness, whereby they light in wait to deceive. Ephesians 4, verse uh, 14. Right? And we are not to be subject to the commandments or doctrine of men, nor their vain philosophies. Colossians 2, verse 8. So the Bible speaks about all of these things. We just need to read the Bible and understand and live according to the Bible. So if you live according to the Word of God, you will know these things. And you know what to avoid. You know what to reject. You know what to follow. We also need to beware with some doctrines which Christ hates. There are some doctrines that Jesus hates. Uh, in the book of Revelation, he, men he, he uh, mentioned this. Uh, number one, we are to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, Luke 12, verse 1, Acts 23, verse 8, Matthew uh, 16, verse 12. The doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? Uh, that produce self-righteousness. This is the doctrine that produce self-righteousness and also they teach the commandment of God, uh, commandment of man for doctrine, all right? So they focus on the commandment of man, not the commandment of God. So they talk about the law of the elders, the tradition of the elders. So all those traditions, <clears throat> they emphasize, but not the doctrine of God. So beware, Jesus said, we need to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the doctrine of the Sadducees. But 
the, the very obvious uh, manifestation of this doctrine is that they produce self-righteousness in the person's life. To make the person say, I am more holy than other people, or I am better than other people, you know, and very critical, very judgmental. He said, he is living like that, he is wearing like that, you know, oh, yeah, so I, I'm better, you know, I don't do that, you know. So that is self-righteous, self-righteousness, being proud, spiritual pride. That is the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees produced. And mind you, many Christians are walking like that. Many Christians are walking like that. We need to repent and we need to embrace the doctrine of Christ that produces godliness, holiness, and humility. Say amen. Hallelujah. Number two, the Lord condemns and hates the doctrine held by the churches in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3. What are those? Number one, the doctrine of Balaam. Doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Uh, of course, a lot of cultish and all that, but uh, one of the doctrine of Balaam is greed. That is the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans uh, founded by, by a man. Actually, he was one of the disciples before one of the early church disciples. His name is Nicolaus. Uh, actually, if you believe Santa Claus, he is from this, all right? This is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, all right? So that is where Santa Claus came from, um, Santa Claus. Uh, Santa Claus is Saint Nicholas or Nicolaus. So that is the Nicolaitans. So he became the false prophet and he, uh, what do you call, he... Uh, create this movement or this group, all right? Uh, uh, Nicholas, so he became the false prophet. So that's why Jesus condemns his teaching, right? Uh, this Nicholas, Nicholas or the Nicolaitans, a lot of cultish and, uh, you know, uh, spiritish kind of uh, teaching. Uh, and also, number three, the doctrine of Jezebel. Revelation 2 Verse 20, 24. Of course, the Jezebel of the Old Testament is different from the Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 24. But the spirit is the same. The nature is the same. Uh, the doctrine of Jezebel is a spirit that is exercising control. All right? So this woman in the church here in Revelation 2, verse 20 to 24 <coughs> Jesus rebuked the church for allowing this woman, Jezebel, to seduce the people in the church or the leaders in the church and control. So uh, Jezebelic spirit is a controlling spirit, right? So Jesus hates this kind of teaching, right? Greed, uh, greed uh, a cultish, and also this uh, Jezebelic spirit. So Jesus hates these doctrines because of its corrupting influence in the church and in the lives of the believers. So we must beware, we must learn to know this uh, because it is corrupting and it is damaging to our life as a believer, especially to us. Uh, Paul warns Timothy and Titus concerning those who will uh, resist the truth also. A man of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, who had given themselves over to fables, vain babbling, and endless genealogies. Christianity is not all about genealogies and all of that. I mean, some people, they are going into that. Nothing wrong to learn about where our roots are or, you know, the Jewish genealogies and all of that, but we don't focus there. Uh, we are also warned against false apostles, false prophets and false teachers and other ministers who would bring in damnable and false doctrine. So false doctrines, false teaching that is taught by men, the thoughts of men or the doctrine of men, uh, it is damnable, it is damaging, and it is corrupting. So let us be aware. And that's why we need to Read the Bible and learn <clears throat> what the Bible says. And live by the word. And 
talk about the doctrine of devils. Doctrine of devils, yeah? Uh, in scripture, the Bible tells us that the spirit uh, speaks expressly, um, means clearly. The Holy Spirit speaks clearly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Today, I just read uh, from my Facebook in the news there, under the church leaders news, um, one of the very influential Christian rapper is a Christian rapper, right? Uh, I forgot his name. His name is, uh, but his surname, very interesting, his surname is Panatic. Fanatic, his name is Fanatic, uh, the surname. But he's a very, uh, quite well-known Christian rapper. And he's a preacher. Uh, this guy, the Christian rapper, very influential guy, he has toured the world in preaching the gospel. All right? He preached the gospel everywhere in the world. But today, he announced that he says, I don't believe in the gospel that I preach anymore. So he rejects, he, he, he relinquishes his Christian faith, and he does not believe in Christ anymore. You see? So a person who can preach the gospel around the world, and very famous, influential, but yet at the end of the day, he rejects his faith. And this is what Paul says to Timothy in chapter 4, 1 Timothy, verse 1 to 3. That the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit has already spoken clearly that in the latter days, some will depart from the faith and will give heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of them. So, that's why we need to learn the truth and study the truth and live by the truth because if this influential christian who have been a preacher for so long can reject his faith i mean who are we you know thinking that if we don't study if we don't do if we are not committed to christ you know who are we that says that we can stand no no we have to be on guard right so this uh, doctrines of devils, they are propagated by men who are deceived, deceived men. So very real. This is, these are very real. Paul also spoke of those who corrupt the word of God. They corrupt the word of God, meaning they deal deceitfully with the word. Second Corinthians 2 verse 19. Also, some people, they walk in craftiness. Paul warns us. Be careful, people who walk in craftiness, handling the word of God deceitfully. 2 Corinthians 4.2 Deception was Satan's weapon, first weapon in the Garden of Eden. That was what uh, Satan used, his weapon, deception. And it will also be Satan's last or last day's weapon. So, Satan deceived people. And that is his greatest weapon. He deceived people. Uh, heresies, false doctrines, and doctrines of devils also uh, uh, arise uh, out of demonic influence and how uh, and flow through deceived men. So we need to be careful, yeah? That's why listening to the word, being guided and all is very, very important because we can fall easily to believe heresies and false false doctrines and false uh, uh, teaching uh, from the devil actually uh, false cults in principle preach another jesus and receive another spirit proclaim another gospel second corinthians 11 4 mentioned this see the bible already laid down everything for us all right that is, what, that is what the cultists do, or the false cults, or the false teaching. This is what they do. <clears throat> Last time I mentioned to you about the um, Shinchonji church. They are preaching another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. 
Mormonism, that there's another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, Jehovah Witnesses, you know, I mean, you name all these things. They preach another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Yeah, maybe they use the Bible too, but that is the doctrine of the devil, right? Very interesting. We are in the last days, all of us. We are in the last days. <clears throat> and Satan is releasing his uh, all through doctrines and of demons in order to deceive mankind. Right? So the devil is releasing um, everything that he has. Because we are in the last days. The devil knows that his time is very short. <laughs> so that's why he go all out. So come on, believers... Christian church members, let us do with all of our hearts, do everything to grow in the Lord so that we will be faithful, we will know God intimately, we will be close to God. Let us do everything with all of our hearts. Say amen. And um, because Satan released all that he have, he shows that the absolute need of being founded and established in the sound principles of the doctrine of Christ. So it just shows us, I mean, all the problems in the world and all, all the problems in the church, the division in the church, Christians are falling, Christians are, you know, leaving their faith. It's just telling us and showing us that we need to be founded and established in the sound doctrine and principles of Christ in our life. Come on, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The doctrine has this end. God and Satan. You know, the doctrine of God is the spirit of truth. It brings light. Uh, the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of the apostles. And, you know, believing what, ha what will happen, you will have life <coughs> and Liberty. Wow. Life in liberty. But in the doctrine of Satan, that is the spirit of error. It sounds spiritual and all, but it's spirit of error. And it will bring you to darkness. The doctrine of Satan, the doctrine of devils, the doctrine of men. What happened is, when you believe that, actually you are being deceived. And that will produce death and bondage that and bondage and many christians are bound because they fail to stand on the truth and they believe in a lie right so the only sure and infallible test of all doctrine is the complete body of scripture working form the part to the whole and the whole to the part uh, isaiah the prophet says to the law, that is the word, and to the testimony, that is the scripture. If they, the spirits, the demons, the devils, the doctrine of devils, speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That is what Isaiah said in Isaiah 8, verse 19 to 20, because many Israelites turned to idolatry and turned to cults and believing demons and all. So that is what Isaiah tells them. And also it's a word for us today. Now give me five minutes or so. I want to cover the symbols of doctrine quite quickly. <clears throat> and um, next week we will go to the last uh, portion of this uh, topic. Uh, we talk about the nature of doctrine and the progress of doctrine. That is quite a bit also. So the symbols of doctrine. What are the symbols of doctrine? Uh, number one. The doctrine is like leaven. Uh, what is leaven? Yeast. Yeah? <coughs> yes, yeah. It's a leaven. The symbol of doctrine is leaven. It's like a leaven. That is what people do, do when they make bread or they make a dough. So they use leaven for yeast. Yeast, yeah. So Matthew 16, 5 to 12 uh, mentioned this. Uh, why leaven? Uh, actually, here leaven is used as a an evil, uh, evil influence. Yeah, almost 
ev almost every time in the Bible, especially in New Testament, <clears throat> when the word leaven is used or yeast, it's in the evil sense. Evil sense. So here, leaven works silently and secretly in the lump of dough, influencing the whole until all is leaven. So that is how the doctrine works. It is a symbol of evil influence of teaching. <clears throat> False doctrines corrupts the pure teaching or the meal of God's word or the bread of God's word as well as the person who feeds upon it. So that's why we need to be careful in what doctrine we receive. Or sometimes we join this group or we join this church. I, I'm not saying other church is bad. Right? They are good people. They are good church. They are good people. But then sometimes the the element of the teaching or the body of teaching that they have, it produce, uh, you know, what, what they produce in the life of the person, that is what we are concerned about, right? Some it makes them proud, some it makes them self-righteous, some it makes them super spiritual, you know, sometimes this kind of thing happens, you see? Uh, but be, why? Because this teaching, the doctrine, it, it works silently. Work silently, uh, and and it influences the whole uh, body of the person, you know, his mind and his belief in all of that. Of so, the the false teaching also it happens like that. <clears throat> Number two, uh, doctrine. The symbol of doctrine is like the wind, right? So one, it works. Silently influencing like the leaven of the yeast. But doctrine also is like <clears throat> the wind. The wind. Ephesians 4.14. He said we must not be carried about with the wind of doctrine. You know, every kind of winds of doctrine and the slight of men, the craftiness and all of that. Uh, why? Believers, the Bible likened believers as a tree. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Right? He said the believers or the, the righteous is like a tree. The godly is like a tree or the believers like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. So the, the, the believers are like tree. Doctrine is like wind. And sometimes wind, when, when the strong wind comes, sometimes it can uproot the trees. Right? False doctrines uproot believers who is not rooted in the word of the Lord. So that's why we need to learn to be established in our faith because the winds of doctrine come. Sometimes if we are not established, then the winds of doctrine come and will uproot you from uh, your faith. <clears throat> Christian must be rooted and grounded in God. That is what Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, 7 says. You need to be rooted and built up in Him. You need to be rooted and built up in him, right? Because doctrine is like wind. Sometimes it can blow you off and it can uproot you. And then thirdly, doctrine is like rain. And this is in the good sense. Rain is always in the good sense, right? Blessings and all that. But yeast or leaven is, is in the evil sense. Huh? Uh, wind also is like in the evil sense. Uh, you can read that Deuteronomy 32 verse 2. Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11 and Hebrews 6 verse 1 to 9. Rain is used in a good sense referring to heaven sent teaching. That's a blessing. Rain. So good doctrine is heaven sent. It's a revelation from heaven. It's a teaching from heaven. So good doctrine is like rain that it will come and rain upon you. Rain is symbolic of revival. Right? Rain is symbolic of revival. Rain is refreshing. Rain symbols of restoration after the drought of famine. Because after the drought, right, when the rain comes, then things start to grow. That is what good doctrines will do. When good doctrines will come to you, you will begin to grow in God. You will look fresh like a healthy and green tree. Hallelujah. And rain is like a revival. You know, 
when there there is a long drought all right dry then suddenly when the rain comes you see how the people are so happy they will get out of their house and you know play in the rain children will be jumping up and down and run in the rain there will be revival and joy so good doctrine it's like rain that will bring revival uh, in Isaiah 55 verse 10 11 uh, Isaiah speaks about the cycle of the rain as representing the cycle of the word so when the rain come you know the growth will come so when the word come the good doctrine will come praises and thanksgiving go up to God we will grow in the Lord hallelujah wonderful that's wonderful this nature of doctrine I will cover next week we will end here tonight and uh, we will have a little bit of uh, sharing discussion if you want to let's pray thank you for your word Lord bless us and help us to be established in the foundation truth and good doctrines from your word bless your people we pray in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen hallelujah amen praise God Amen. Amen.